Welcome to chapter four. We're going to be spending most of our time in this course, this chapter, talking about activity-based costing. Now, activity-based costing is not a third costing type. So it's not like you are job order or process or activity-based costing. Activity-based costing is an enhancement to your job order or your process costing. So depending on what kind of product or service or job that you provide, that, that will dictate whether you have a job order costing system or a process costing system. But then you may choose to come in and implement this activity-based costing enhancement on top of your job order or process costing. So activity-based costing is all about figuring out a better way of allocating overhead. So regardless of whether you use job order or process costing, direct materials cost and direct labor cost are directly traced to the finished product. So there's really not a lot of ambiguity regarding how much a direct materials or direct labor cost a product used. The problem comes in with the overhead. So in the past, we've allocated overhead using a predetermined overhead rate, but we used one rate for all of the products that we made in our entire company. So I want you to think about if you are Walt Disney Corporation, think about all of the different products that Walt Disney makes. So everything from the stuffed toys that you may find in the Disney store, to t-shirts, to TV shows, to movies, to food that they serve in their theme parks, all of those are consuming overhead at different rates and different ways. So using one predetermined overhead rate to allocate overhead to all of those products and services doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So activity-based costing comes in and says, hey, let's allocate this overhead in a better way. And so that's what we are focusing on here. So again, those direct materials are assigned to the products, but all of those indirect materials, we allocate. We're estimating how much they're using. Estimates are inherently wrong. Okay, we know that activity based costing is just a way to make a better estimate of how much overhead a product is using. It's still an estimate, but it's a better estimate than what we've been using before. So we're going to walk through a, an example here. We're smart touch, smart touch learning. We make tablet computers, those iPad, Microsoft Surface kind of tablets. And, but now we have two different models. We have the standard model and we have the premium model. And so we're going to allocate the cost, the overhead cost, to these two different models in several different methods so we can kind of look at an example and figure out which is the best way to do it. So, for example, we are currently making 2,000 units of the standard model and 500 units of the premium model. We know that each standard model has $150 of materials, the premium model has $200 of materials, the labor cost for the standard model is $88 per unit, for the premium model it's $148 per unit. So obviously the premium model is more expensive to produce, it uses more, more materials, it uses a lot more labor. Now, overhead is $100,000. This $100,000 is for all products, both the standard model and the premium model, and that's all the overhead. So that includes indirect materials, indirect labor, depreciation on the equipment, uh, the factory supervisor salary, insurance on the factory, all of that kind of good stuff. So what activity-based costing is focusing on is trying to find a better way to allocate this $100,000 of overhead to the two different products. So what we've been doing, what we have done in chapters two and three up to this point is using what's called a single plant-wide rate. You may also hear this called a traditional approach or a traditional method. So you're just using one overhead rate, one predetermined overhead rate. So all $100,000 gets us allocated based on, in this case, direct labor costs, that's what we used before, to both the standard models and the premium models. Now, this method is okay to use if 
overhead is not a lot. If you happen to be a company where your overhead is relatively immaterial or relatively insignificant, if you only make one kind of product, then maybe this is okay to use. But if you're a company, I mean, Smart Touch Learning only makes two products here. But again, think about if you are Disney, how many products you make. You don't want to use just one rate. But we're going to start with doing one rate. This is what we've done before. This is not new. We haven't introduced any new stuff here so far. So if we are going to allocate overhead on the basis of one predetermined overhead rate, remember our numerator in the predetermined overhead rate is total overhead. So in this case, that's $100,000. And then our denominator is our total cost driver. So our total cost driver in this case would be total direct labor cost. So if you remember, we made 2,000 of the standard models and they used $88 of overhead each and we were making 500 of the premium models and they used $148 of overhead each. So hopefully you've got your calculator here and handy and you can crunch these numbers. So the total labor for the standard model would be $176,000 then. And the total overhead for the premium models would be $74,000. So that means total, total labor cost is $176 plus the $74 or $250,000. So if I'm going to compute my single traditional plant-wide predetermined overhead rate. My numerator is my estimated total overhead of $100,000. And my denominator is my estimated total direct labor cost because that is my cost driver. So in this case, that is $250,000. So when I divide that out, again, hopefully you've got your calculator handy. If not, pause the video, grab it. You need to be working these problems out with me. We get a predetermined overhead rate of 0 0.40 or 40%. All right, so here on the screen, you see again how we calculated the total direct labor cost. Then we calculated our overhead rate where we said our total estimated overhead is the 100,000 divided by the 250, and that gives us our 40% of direct labor cost. So now based on that 40% of direct labor cost, we will allocate that 100,000 of overhead to the two products. So we'll multiply 40% by the amount of overhead, that, by the amount of labor, pardon me, by the amount of direct labor that the standard model used. And we'll multiply this 40% by the amount of direct labor that the premium model used. So the standard model, remember, used 176,000 of direct labor. So that means it's going to get 70,400 of overhead cost. And the premium model used 74,000 of direct labor. So it's going to get 29,6 of labor. Notice that those add up to 100,000. Again, all we were doing was taking this 100,000 of overhead, our numerator, it, you're, they always have to add up, these have to match, and just splitting it out between the two products. So now we can determine the cost of making one unit of the standard model and one unit of the premium model. So if the standard model is get, getting 70,400 of overhead and we are making 2,000 units, then that's $35.20 each of overhead per unit. For the premium model, they're getting 29,600 of the total overhead. We're making 500 units, so they're going to get $59.20 of overhead per unit. Now we can add this with the direct materials and direct labor to determine the total cost of the standard and the premium. Remember, we were given the direct materials and direct labor at the beginning. So one under the standard costing method, 
One unit of the standard model costs $273.20, and one unit of the premium model costs $407.20. So again, I hope that you're go as we're going through this, that you're pausing that video and you're working the problems out and you're following along. And if you're not sure where a number came from, that you either go back and rewatch the video, rewind it and rewatch, or you go to the message board and you post a question. I couldn't follow where did this number come from because it's really important that you remember where all the that you understand where all the numbers come from. It's also really important that as you're working through and you're filling in your notes that you're labeling your information so that when you come back later you understand what 27320 is and it's not just some random number. Now a step up from this, this single traditional plant-wide overhead rate is to use what we call departmental rates. So this makes the most sense under kind of a process costing method. It could work under a job order costing also. But if you think about under process costing, remember we move based on departments. So we had department one, work in process, department two, work in process. So it makes sense then that if you are a process costing system, you might want to use departmental allocation for overhead. So you would allocate all of the overhead associated with department one in department one, and then all of the overhead associated with department two in department two. So here we're told, remember we're smart touch learning, we've got two different departments. We have the assembly department and the software department. So this is department one, and then we have department two, sorry. And so each of those two departments is going to get their own cost driver and have their own allocated over uh, their own overhead allocated to them. So we're told for the assembly department, we're going to allocate on the basis of machine hours. And in the software department, we're going to allocate on the basis of direct labor cost. Now remember, the total overhead for both departments is $100,000. So the first thing we're gonna, going to do is estimate out of that $100,000 how much is being used by the assembly department and how much is being used by the software department. So we're told that the assembly department is getting is we are estimating is using sixty thousand dollars out of that hundred thousand total so we already know we haven't been told yet but we already know that the software department is going to use forty thousand dollars of overhead that's our estimate it's an estimate it's not perfect but it's a best estimate that we've got now remember we're allocating the assembly department overhead on the basis of machine hours and we are told that estimated machine hours are 20,000. So in this case, we're going to compute an overhead rate for each department. So the assembly department overhead is the total estimated overhead for that department divided by the total estimated cost driver for that department. So in this case, we're going to divide $60,000 by 20,000 machine hours, and we get an overhead rate of $3 per machine hour. So this is just one of our two overhead rates. We're now going to calculate the rate for the software department also. We also have to now allocate this overhead from the assembly department to the two products. So if we are told that out of those 20,000 of machine hours, the standard model is using 13,000, then we're going to allocate $39,000 of the assembly department overhead to the standard model. And if the premium model is using 7,000 machine hours, then we're going to allocate 21,000 of the assembly department overhead to the premium model. So again, notice that those add up to 60,000, which is what was in our numerator. These numbers always have to match, okay? So now we're gonna do the exact same thing for the assembly department, for the software department, pardon me. So 
Here we're told that, and we already knew, that out of the 100,000 of total overhead, the software department is getting 40,000. Now remember, we're allocating software department overhead on the basis of direct labor cost. So the total of the direct labor cost is 31,250 estimated. Out of that 31,250, 22,000 is for the premium, excuse me, is for the standard model. And the other, 92.50 is for the premium model. So we're first going to calculate an overhead rate for the software department and then allocate to the two different products. So remember our numerator for our overhead department will be 40,000 and we'll divide it by 31.250. So we'll get an overhead rate of 1.28 or 128%. Remember when our denominator is direct labor cost, we compute that, convert that to a percent. Now I'm going to multiply 128% by the 22,000 for the standard and by the 9250 for the premium to find out how much of this 40,000 is allocated to each of the standard and the premium models. So here I can see that out of that 40,000, the standard is getting 28,160 and the premium is getting 11,840. And again, notice that adds up to 40,000, which is what our numerator is. And remember, those always have to match up. So now we can compute a cost per unit for the standard model and the premium model. So let's look at this. We're going to take the overhead from the standard model for the assembly department plus the overhead from the standard model from the software department and so out of the hundred thousand of overhead 67,160 is going to the standard model we divide that by 2,000 units and we get our 3358 we're going to do the same thing for the premium model we're going to take the overhead allocated to the premium model from the assembly department plus the overhead from the software department that adds up to 32,840. Notice that these two numbers together add up to 100,000. We're still working with that same 100,000 of total overhead. We're just splitting it or allocating it between the two products. So when we divide the total overhead for the premium model by the 500 units, we get our per unit cost. And now when we add it with our direct materials and direct labor, we can get a new, a, a sort of revised total cost for the standard model and the premium model. So now let's compare the cost of the standard model and the premium model using our single plant-wide rate and our multiple department rates. So we originally said that the standard model cost 273.20, but after we use departmental accounting, we're like, oh, you know what? It's a little cheaper. It's really only 271.58. It's $1.62 cheaper than we originally thought it was. Now, granted, that's not a lot, but at 2,000 units, it's a fairly significant amount. Now let's look at the premium model. We originally thought the premium model was only 407.20. Now we're like, you know what? The premium model is more expensive to produce. It's really closer to 413.68. It's almost $6.50 more expensive to produce than we thought it was. Now that's a fairly significant difference, um, especially if you think about a company like Microsoft or Apple. How many iPads or surfaces do they make? And if their cost is off by six dollars, that's that's pretty significant. So in the next unit, we'll go into an even more sophisticated method and use more activity rates or more overhead rates based on activities and not just departments.